Hello amateurs, I'm upset and that doesn't happen very often so strap yourselves in. I put some content out there last week around certain refereeing events, you know the ones, and I was pretty appalled by some of the responses that I got back. There were some nice responses, there were some reasonable responses and there were some that like frankly made my blood boil and they kind of fell into two categories so we'll go through those. Category number one they must be held accountable. Now, what does that mean exactly? Well, this I'm going to read out this one tweet, and it's just one of an example of tweets, so um, we'll go through it. If we had accountabilities for referees like we do with players, then rugby moves forward. We can't allow that to go unnoticed. Remember that last sentence. We can't allow that to go unnoticed. I'll come back to that at the end. Now, to the people who write, tweets like this people who write messages like this or social media or even think it to be honest how do you think they're not accountable what part of the review process makes you think they're not accountable the referees will have a hot review after the game they go into the changing room they bang down the hatches they don't look at social media and they discuss amongst themselves about the key incidents from that game They'll be like, right, what's gone on here? What do we think about that? Is there anything else come to mind that we didn't get on the pitch? After that, when all the dust has settled, they'll, they'll do a personal review. They'll go through the whole game themselves, work out which decisions they thought they got right, which ones they got wrong, and then also non-decisions, times when they didn't blow the whistle. Were they right or wrong? And they do this every single week. After that, they'll have a peer review with their coach, with the referees group and a coach review as well. All of that leads to future match selection. Um, you know, basically, the better you are, the higher up that ladder you go and the better games you get. And if you uh, have a bad one or whatever, then you will potentially be dropped and go lower down the ladder. That is accountability and it's professional. So this is their jobs. This is their livelihoods as well. So just bear that in mind next time you say they must be held accountable. They are. OK, the second category and it just seems that there's people out there who think it's okay to question a referee's integrity. And again, this is one quote, um, but it's one of a few, and, and it's just an example. And it, it goes like this, quote, Why should we not question a professional? He's ultimately being paid by you or me. We're no longer in the era of reference for a pint and, pin, and pin money. These guys, girls, take the money. They should be open to the same scrutiny that I am at work. OK, um, and also I did a poll over on YouTube and about a third of the respondents believe the referees have a conscious or uh, unconscious bias, uh, which shocked me as well that people believe that. Now, let's just go what these referees have been through. They've been in the game for years. They've been refereeing at the lower levels and worked their way up for year on year and year going through reviews, having referee assessors. They've started at the bottom. They've gone through county, regional, national leagues constant reviews to get to where they are now. Eventually, the very few, the elite of the, the elite, the best that this pyramid provides, make it to be a top level ref and can consider it a profession. It's their job, it's their income, and it's also their passion. Don't forget about that. These referees love to do what they do, right? They love the game and they wanna make it better by, be, by being the referee. So. Why on earth do you think they would jeopardise that to influence a game based on a previous association? I, I just think it's absolute crazy talk and it's, it's a non-starter for me. And in the reviews I mentioned earlier, they actually address biases. They're aware that biases may occur. Now, it's not, you know, for one team or the other per se. It's like, are we favouring the team in possession too much? Are we... Uh, doing something that favours one team at a ruck too much? Are we, you know, too whistle happy at the scrum? Maybe, you know, these kind of biases, not are we favouring Bath, for example. OK, let's go back to that last sentence that I mentioned earlier, which was, we can't allow that to go unnoticed. And it ties in with the scrutiny part, you know. What part of this do you think is unnoticed? You know, thousands of people in the stadium, and let me point this out, they're probably, well, not probably, the vast majority are ill-informed and ill-placed to actually provide a, a, a decent uh, opinion anyway. Thousands of people in the stadium shouting, 
even though, you know, like I said, not a good uh, knowledge of the laws and not a good place to see from. Thousands at home with the benefits of replays. The players and the coaches on the day. The review process that's previously mentioned. What about that is not unnoticed? And do you think that your tweet is going to make any difference to any of this process? It's not. It's absolutely not. So another thing that I'm getting from people who write stuff like this is just arrogance. It's arrogance. They categorically believe they are right and that their opinion is more valuable than the incredibly experienced referees and referee assessors. And that just blows my mind. Like if you just take last week's incident, for example, I think most people thought when they first saw it that it was clear. But then after a bit of time, after people had watched the replays amongst the mainstream podcasts last week, there were many different opinions about the rights and the wrongs of the decisions made. The RFU, Paul Hull, the referee uh, manager, released a statement which was absolutely credible and made total sense to me as well. So, you know, how you can categorically believe that you're right on any particular instance and say they're wrong and it must be brought to attention, again, just blows my mind. Now, from conversations I've had over the last 30 years about rugby, the laws that I know I have an above average understanding of the laws. I know that. But I will always defer to the referee who was there in the moment because it's their position. It's from their point of view that really matters. And and that's the end of it. And also, I recognise that their experience and their knowledge of the laws is far superior to mine. So even though I think that I'm well placed to talk about these things and I find discussing law and decisions, I find that interesting, I'll always defer to the referee. And I do it with a, from a place of empathy and support when we're doing this. OK. Quite alarmingly, a lot of these things, uh, these opinions are coming from people who are rugby coaches. One was even a chairman of a rugby club. And I slightly despair that these are the people who are sort of showing an example to our players and, and people in rugby of the future that they think this is OK. So, you know, just a word, just, you know, look after your position, think about the game, think about the future of the game, think about encouraging referees. And if you want more detail about any of the above, anything that we I've t spoken about before, then you should go and get it from the horse's mouth. Go and listen to Luke Pearce on the Big Jim Show or the Rugby Inheritance podcast, both of which I've linked below. Go and listen to them now and educate yourself about what these referees do, who they are and what they go through every single week and the rubbish they have to deal with from people on social media. OK, that's it. That's my rant. It's over. Bottom line, support the referees. Discuss the decisions if you wish to. I think that's interesting. I think it's reasonable. But support the referees. Now, that's the end of it. Uh, I don't care if you subscribe there. I don't care if you watch that one next. Just stop slating our referees on social media, you clowns. <laughs>